I am Keith uh, Destrick. I'm with the Care Starts Now and the DIPG DMG Collaborative. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you joining us here this morning to uh, talk a little bit about your grant and your project here. Uh, we have Great. a couple of folks with us to uh, walk through uh, that grant with it. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll kick it off with uh, uh, Al Musella from the Musella Foundation. Hi, Hi, Al. Hi, Al. Good to see Hi. you. Good to see you. Hi, I'm Al Musella from the Musella Foundation for Brain Tumor Research and Information Incorporated. I'm a foundational member of the DIPG Collaborative, which is a group of 26 independent foundations who are working together to speed up the search for the cure. Um, before getting further, I want to just tell you that uh, the DIPG Collaborative has uh, funded your project in the amount of $198,436 for the project phase one, two trial of Exoblate, Sonala 001 uh, in pediatrics with a focus on DIPG. Thank you so much, Al. It's so wonderful to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Good luck with the so. project. This, this is one of my favorite therapies. Aside from uh, the chance that it's going to be a cure, this is one of those things where it's easy to do and not that tough on patients, hopefully. Uh, my sister-in-law, who died of a glioblastoma, always told me she wants me to find her a cure and one that doesn't hurt. And this might actually fit the bill. But this is one of the most exciting technologies I've ever been involved with. And so good luck with the project. Oh, thank you so much for that. those kind words, Al. It took me 30 years to get here, but I have been working on this for about 30 years. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to John uh, McIntosh from the Cure Starts Now. John? Thanks, Al. Hey, good morning, Dr. Marcus. Uh, congratulations. And um, I, I run the Mass Rhode Island chapter of Cure Starts Now. Been involved with uh, Cure Starts Now for about eight years uh, since my daughter Nicole passed uh, from DIPG. Oh, and during I'm those sorry. eight years, yeah, during those eight years, you know, we worked hard with Keith and the rest of the chapters to do our best to raise funds for inspirational work uh, like yours. And I've seen us fund you know, a pretty comprehensive strategy, looking for agents, looking for delivery methods, mouse models, all kinds of stuff. I think what really excites me about your work is it, it's, it's pulling it together. And, and, and it's, it's going to be a trial that families can look to and, and participate in and honestly give the whole community hope. So it's great to see it translating and come together into a trial. And I wish you all the best success. And um, let me uh, hand it over to, uh, to Melissa uh, from our Round Rock chapter. Hi, Dr. Marcus. I'm Melissa Fleming from the Austin Round Rock chapter of The Cure Starts Now. Uh, Vicki Bredier and I actually got to meet you a few weeks ago when we were out in D.C. and um, learned a little bit more about your device. And I'm very excited to be a part of this and be able to help um, combine the drug with the device. And, you know, my son battled for only seven months when he was seven years old and he wanted to kick cancer in the nuts. And I feel like you're going to help us do that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just want to, uh, I just want to say that um, going to working with children with the IPG uh, has changed my life for the better. And I think it's also the scariest thing I've ever done. I've treated a lot of patient, adult patients with cancer in my life. And this sitting there watching the brainstem, watching the neurosurgeon target the brainstem with our device, and after having been given our drug. Mind you, we treated nine glioblastoma patients with Phoenix, uh, half of their tumors, and there were no side effects. But somehow when you treat a brainstem, it's very scary because no one's you know, ever had the confidence in their therapy to treat uh, you know, a complete half of a brainstem. It's, uh, but I am happy to say that one of my greatest moments was when the patient woke up after anesthesia and within three hours was eating a pizza and dancing in the PICU, literally dancing in the PICU. That made everything worthwhile. So, you know, this, 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 this therapy has been designed over 30 years. It just took that long for the individual pieces to come together. So thank you, thank you. It's been a really, really long journey. But no, we're, we're hoping, yeah, you know, we're very hopeful. 
we're, we're very optimistic to see uh, it go forward with it. We'd love to have, uh, obviously, the updates from you on it. Um, I think one of the things that we try to share, not only with our collaborative uh, members, but also our supporters of of our various charities, because this is you know 20, 26 of us, uh, independent foundations that come together for this one, um, uh, is uh, a quick synopsis, uh, you know, roughly two minutes or less, if you can, of uh, what makes this trial different, um, and and uh, you know why you think that, uh, uh, or and frankly why you've invested as much time and effort into it. What people should know about this is that it's a simple procedure, that it has no known side effect at the moment, and that. I can now say that we've treated uh, half of a brain stem and a whole brain stem. The, the promise of this therapy was seen with glioblastoma. We treated nine patients and there were no side effects. But glioblastoma has been known to collect our drug very well because people use the drug as a visual beacon under fluorescence to identify glioblastoma. Because the IPG usually is not resected. A surgeon won't go near the brainstem to take it out, and the cells are intermixed with the normal cells profusely. There was a big question as to whether or not this drug actually would be accumulated by DIPG. That was the biggest question. And I'm very happy to say that that question was answered by our collaboration with Java Nazarian's group in Zurich, as you know, the Children's Hospital in Zurich is one of the leading the IPG research centers. And we contracted with them through Children's National and Dr. Packer to investigate tissue cultures of child, from children with the IPG and test to see how well the DIPG cells took up our drug. And I'm very happy to report that during that year, that they were working on this project, they discovered that the DIPG cells are actually more active at taking up our drug than the control, positive control rat glioma that was the model system. And the rat glioma we know can be cured by, uh, or, or pretty much you know triple the life expectancy through a single treatment that rat glioma can be the life expectancy of those animals could be tripled by using our drug, or more than that, because we actually didn't find the uh, limit of life expectancy after treatment. So, the work done at the University of Zurich by Java Nazarian's group really gave us the confidence to proceed to the FDA with this clinical trial. That's what makes it different from any other clinical trial I've ever done. We've known the drug accumulates in glioblastoma. We were hoping it would accumulate in the IPG, and it should because it accumulates in very fast growing brain cancers. And so the IPG is the fastest growing brain cancer. And it proved, so the hypothesis worked. It was correct. and we were able to target the IPG. 